Hi everyone, welcome back to UVM series. So in today's session we are going to talk about UVM classes hierarchy. So basically UVM consists of three main types of classes which are UVM object, UVM transaction and UVM component. So we are going to talk about these three topics in today's session and before getting into today's session if you are new to this channel consider subscribing my channel and hit on the notification bell also also you can join my telegram channel in order to have a course related to verilog system verilog and uvm series right so coming to today's session as we already talked uh, previously like basically the uvm class hierarchy is categorized into three types which is uvm object uvm transaction and uvm component so all the predefined and user defined classes that we are using in uvm are categorized into uvm components and uvm objects so basically uh, whatever classes that you are using in order to build the code all these are uh, present in either UVM object or UVM component. So basically that is why we will be considering these two UVM object and UVM component as a basic building blocks upon which we will be developing our entire UVM code right so this is the hierarchy so basically starting the main components are uvm object and uvm component right and then the uvm transaction also we will be talking about what is this uvm object what is this uvm component and what is uvm transaction what is the difference between uvm object and uvm component so all these things we are going to discuss today right now coming to the first one which is uvm component so uh, this was introduced in the UVM like uh, UVM component was the introduced in UVM itself. You don't see this UVM component within the system very long. UVM component and UVM objects right. So these were introduced in universal verification methodology. So what is this UVM component? So simply put it in words like in order to make you understand simply the components are UVM components are nothing but those classes whose objects will be available from starting of simulation to the end of simulation. Like if we are considering the starting of simulation to the end of simulation as a life cycle of our TB. Okay, that means from starting to end if we are considering it as the life cycle. So, those components which are present in this entire life cycle are called as UVM components. For example, okay, in order to make it more easy to understand, like drivers. There are certain components like drivers, monitors, right. So, these are components etc. There are many like scoreboard if you see. These are certain components which we will be seeing from entire simulation. Like from starting of our simulation to the end of simulation, we need these components. Like we will be using the drivers, component, monitors, like all the different teams will be using these components like drivers, monitors. So they will be starting from, they will be present from starting of simulation to end of simulation. That means in the entire life cycle of TB, if there are certain components which are present in the entire life cycle, then all those components will be coming under this UVM component category. Got my point? So, this is UVM component, right? So, the objects of those classes, right, which are in the entire TB life cycle, those are called as UVM components. Clear? Right? For example, drivers, monitors, etc. So, since these components will be present in the entire life cycle of our TB, so they need to follow the phase concept, right? So, that means in system, in UVM, sorry, in UVM, you, uh, uh, the phasing concept was introduced. Like, uh, there are various phases in UVM like build phase, connect phase, run phase. So, in this way, there are various phases. Don't worry about that. We will be discussing it in the upcoming classes. So, 
since the uvm components are those which are present in the entire simulation entire life cycle of the tb so they need to follow this phase concept also that means they need to undergo various phases all the uvm components will be undergoing various phases concept right so this is about the uvm component so uvm co component is considered as an individual block of tb which will perform some certain specific task okay for example while driving the stimulus it will be performing some task while monitoring the stimulus okay these are certain tasks in order to drive some stimulus in order to monitor some stimulus. so all these are the works which are performed by the uvm components right so this is about the uvm component clear right so now coming to what is uvm object the entire opposite thing of uvm component like what we have talked about uvm component those components like those classes of objects which are present in the entire life cycle of tb that means which components are required from starting of simulation to end of simulation those categories come under uvm components right so the opposite of that means those component those objects which are not required for the entire life cycle of tb that means from starting to ending if there are some components which are not required from starting to end of the simulation then those components come under sorry those objects will be come under this uvm objects right clear so there are two categories uvm component and uvm object so the object of classes which will be present from entire life cycle of tb they are categorized into uvm component and those objects which are not required in entire life cycle of tb they will be categorized into uvm object right so examples of uvm components are like driver monitor so all those things okay now coming to examples of uvm object okay transaction class okay you are you will be you will be seeing the transaction right so the transaction class is something which is not required in the entire life cycle of tb right so this category like this the transaction class objects all come will be coming under this uvm object right so there is one advantage of this uvm object since it doesn't need in the entire life cycle of the tb it can be created anywhere and it can be destroyed anywhere also right okay whenever we require it we can uh, create it whenever we require it we can just uh, we don't require it we can just destroy it because there is no need to uh, save it for the entire thing okay so whenever we need it we can create and we can destroy it whenever it is uh, uh, whenever the work is completed right so that is called uvm objects less those objects which can be created whenever we require and it can be destroyed those come under uvm object but those objects which should be required which are mandatory for our entire life cycle those come under the uvm component side right so this is the uvm component and uvm object right so uh, the example of this uvm object is like transaction classes and and we have already uh, just now we have discussed they don't need for the entire life cycle since they don't need the entire test bench life cycle they don't need to follow any phases they don't undergo any phases like all the phases they don't undergo right because they are not present from starting to the ending they don't need to follow any phases right so this is about the uvm object now both this uvm object and uvm component like what is this uvm component and uvm object they are nothing but classes right so classes needs to be uh, in order to make a uh, particular you already know what are classes in system verilog right classes require objects is it or not so these objects needs to be created right so in system verilog you will you will be how you will be generating the package like how you will be creating the object you will be using the new function is it or not in order to create an object you will be using a new function but in uvm you don't use the new function in uvm you will be using the factory okay uvm factory in order to generate the objects of these classes like in order to generate the object of uh, uh, transaction in order to generate the object for a transaction class for uh, 
monitor class for driver class for all these classes you will be generating the object with the help of uvm factory instead of new function this new function you will be using in the system very low but in uvm you will just be using the uvm factory there are many other advantages for uvm factory we will be discussing it further like so all the just like now we have discussed all the classes objects are registered within the uvm factory because uvm factory is responsible for generating the objects for these classes so we need to register all the uvm components that we are using in order to develop our test bench in this uvm factory itself right so this is about the uvm component uvm object and then the uvm factory now let us see what is the difference between uvm component and uvm object we have already discussed this like uvm components are non transient in nature that means they don't have short period of time like transient means which are for short period of time but uvm components are those components which need for the entire life cycle that means they should have a long time period so they are non transient in nature but when it comes to uvm objects they can be created anywhere they can be they can be created when needed they can be destroyed whenever it is not needed that means their lifetime is short period of time that is why uvm objects are transient in nature whereas uvm components are non transient in nature right so uvm components are static in nature because they exist through the entire simulation time they are static in nature but when it comes to uvm objects they are dynamic in nature why they are dynamic in nature as we already told you that they can be created whenever we need they can be destroyed whenever we don't need so they are this is nothing but the dynamicity right so the uvm objects are dynamic in nature and uvm components are static in nature right and then coming to as we already discussed before that uh, both uvm components and uvm objects need to be registered in the uvm factory right so how are we going to register it in uvm factory we are having macros like tick uvm component utils and tick uvm object utils okay if you see here whatever components that come under uvm component category those should be registered with tick uvm component utils macro okay whatever objects that will be coming under uvm object those should be registered with tick uvm object utils macro okay they they shouldn't be mismatched that means uvm components should be only registered with uvm component utils macro and uvm mag object should be only registered with uvm object utils macro okay uvm object again they shouldn't be mismatched that means component should be um, should not touch the should not be registered with uvm component utils and uh, Uh, object should not be registered with uvm component utils right so this is the difference between uvm component and uvm objects now coming to what is uvm transaction so you already know the transaction is nothing but generating stimulus okay so it is used in order to generate the stimulus and analyze it uvm transaction will be used okay and also as we already discussed they are transient in nature why is because trans transient means they are only created whenever they are needed like whenever we need a transaction it is generated and then whenever we don't need it we will just leave it right so that is uvm transaction so whenever we are generating some simple transactions they can be derived using uvm transaction class like they are um, as we already uh, know that there are three classes which are uvm component uvm object and uvm transactions right so whenever there are just simple transactions we can derive it from uvm transaction but if there are some specific classes okay some specific sequence specific transactions then what we will do we will be deriving such type of transactions with the help of uvm sequence item in the previous session we have already discussed about what is this sequence item and why do we need this sequence item in uvm right if you didn't see that video i link that in the description box you can go there and check it out which is the introduction of uvm where i have discussed what are the 
UVM, uh, what is UVM, what, what is the need of UVM, what are the various uh, introductions that were done in UVM, so all those things, you can just check it out in order to know what is this uh, particular uh, UVM sequence item, right? So, if you want any some specific uh, transaction, sequence specific transaction, then those sequence specific transactions will be derived from the UVM sequence item. If there is no any specific transaction, then we, if there are just simple transactions, they can be derived from the UVM transaction class, right? So, this is about UVM object, UVM transaction and UVM component, right? So, in the next session, we will be uh, talking about many more concepts like uh, UVM architecture and all. So, don't miss the sessions and if you like this video, please do like it and also share it to all the VLS aspirants who also want to enter into design and verification domain. And also, please do give it a like so that it is kind of motivation for me to make more such videos on UVM. That is all for today. Thank you all.